cost of goods, management, and how inflation has affected the beauty industry. Alicia Soulier is here to chat about her invention, Salon Scale. Her transition from the salon space to tech industry, her experience overcoming imposter syndrome, and all things beauty. Let's jump into this episode. So you've got Alicia here with Salon Scale, and we want to hear all about your story on how you started this, like, literally the perfect business model for salon and spa owners. This is, I'm so excited to hear all about it. Yeah, I, you know, I think... (laughs) I think sometimes things just fall on your lap. And this is kind of the story that kind of happened to me. I started as a salon owner and uh, I struggled with many different parts of my business, but I didn't quite realize that the technology that I was going to then go on to create was going to help change like many salon owners that were just like me. Um, so it was a little bit of a gift that kind of came that way. So it's been a, a little over four years ago. I had my aha moment where I was actually renovating the salon. And I was trying to get paint that day and the kids and we went and got frozen yogurt and the paint, there was the machine and they were mixing the machine and then it started kind of brewing some thoughts. And then we went and got the frozen yogurt and, you know, my bowl was different than my husband's and my kids. And it just like clicked and I was like, oh my goodness, like this is what we need. We just need an update in technology to measure the cost of these ingredients of what we're mixing in real time. And now I, like, with the help of my husband at that time, thought, okay, like, how are we going to even start there? And we kind of dwindled it down to an application, building an app that spoke to a Bluetooth scale uh, and could tell us the actual cost of our, our formulas. What were our formulas actually costing us? Uh, and so we we went and I found like this third party builder in the city uh, and went with this crazy idea. And it was so funny, like having a whole table of people that are like not from the beauty sector and yeah. telling them like how we are going to build this app that measures product um, was, it, you know, it took a few, let's say months for us to kind of really understand the concept. And the moment that I came in for our MVP, we got this prototype and we put pens on the scale and it told me the cost of it in Olaplex, a very expensive product, I broke down. Um, in that moment, I realized like that was my calling. That was, that was the moment that like I could change an industry uh, and help us with this last little puzzle piece that was costing thousands of dollars uh, to salons all around the world. So that's kind of the start of everything. And there's so much more, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that, yeah. but that's kind of the the start of my story yeah and like we were saying before the call it's I was like literally searching oh like how to figure out like different ways to as a spa owner myself trying to figure out different ways on per service per cost per overhead like there's so many things that take in consideration like I'm sure our clients and staff they come in and out of the spa and they're like oh you just made this much money and I'm like do you have any idea how much like we just got a bunch of nail polish and gel products in and I was like one of my girls was like holding the box I'm like do you realize that's $300 worth of product right there and she's like what I'm like yeah like and then the cost of goods are just going up more and more as we're feeling in any any shape of our life when it comes to groceries spa salon thing anything we purchase on a day-to-day basis is obviously going up with inflation um so kind of like what we were talking about before the call about expanding into some of the other realms now that you've been four years in specifically just the salon area um how many um companies do you have under salon scale that are like you mentioned like opalex as well as some of the other ones as well um how many companies do you have working with you with it so when we look at brands, we have well over 250 brands that are in our, our product line, our product cataloging, um, and they're mostly back bar, like for specific for salons. Uh, we haven't, you know, moved into different verticals like the spa space yet, but these are areas that we're definitely looking at working with, but they, you know, we need to have massive databases to be able to do that, uh, mm-hmm. to get these proper cataloging. So really partnering with these major brands uh, and, and companies, manufacturers that already have their catalogs is really that next play. 
because yeah. it's much easier for us to work with their catalogs. But when you start any type of company, you really have to prove that, like, is this something people are going to pay for? And does it actually have traction or does it work? Yeah. Uh, and so we focused really a lot in the last four years to be able to provide this technology um, to prove that, you know, salons and then others in this, anyone that really wants cost of goods management, um, you can see that there's a need for this type of technology. Mm -hmm. um, and I think really, honestly, just to kind of back you up on, on that, customers not realizing how much things cost, especially that is that, you know, a decade ago, the cost of goods were just not as high. Yeah. And we were in a higher marginal, marginal business. You know, we were making more profits back then. There was a lot more margin. Um, the products didn't cost as much because the actual techniques weren't, you know, didn't require as much products to be used. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, in inflation and change in generations change all the time, as we know, uh, and it gives opportunities for these companies that sell products to like capture that, that margin. And now it's kind of gotten to the point where we need technical solutions to take out middlemen, because the more that we realize that this is happening, the smaller our industries shrink. Um, and so, you know, the focus right now is to make sure that we have technical solutions to handle all these costs of goods, make sure that people are getting paid and make sure that the end consumer does understand that there is profits that need to be made and we can't just do services for free. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is such a time, it's time as well as your product and the overhead expenses. Like there's so many things to take in consideration as a spa owner or even like a sole salon owner or even just working for yourself. Like it, there is so many, so many things to break down in the cost. Um, so it's, it's so crazy how from like basically because you were a, a hairstylist I kind of heard your pre-story at another podcast yes. listening to so you're a hairstylist before and then well you always kind of worked in that space was it your aunt or someone a family member that was that owned a salon that you worked with no I I think I'm the first hairdresser from my family um okay. but very quickly like I started from a stylist became an independent sole uh, sole owner of my yeah. own independent business and then I opened up a 10 chair salon when I was like I think 24 like I was a baby um and yeah I did that all so I kind of got to see all aspects of it at that time but yeah I definitely my roots are very well into the actual service side of doing beauty services and everything from cuts to colors and more amazing. and then going into tech like I feel like it's such a such a jump now how was that how did that work like where you were like okay I'm a hairstylist but now I'm going to start a tech basically a tech company what was the the process like so both sides are a little different so now you're kind of like straddling two sectors so you're like in the technology sector where you're an expert Mm -hmm. So you're, I'm a salon expert. I understand the beauty space. So people that I talk to in the technical space, they're like wowed by my knowledge on the salon space, right? So yeah. you kind of feel this like empowerment on that side. And all you're, you're doing is you're applying the technology to that. So it's, it's kind of really like humbling to know that you become this expert. And then on the other side, you know, you're in the salon space, you're part of it. So you're, you, you kind of are a little bit of an imposter syndrome in different ways in both of them. And so in the salon space, I, you know, I was part of the community and I didn't want to be like, I'm the only one that knows this thing because it just comes across, you know, so you're kind of doing these two different realms, <laughs> yeah. um, but they do help each other because the more I started to learn the tech side and the fa uh, business foundations and really financial literacy and more, I was able to then apply that back to the salon space, which then I became more of a business expert for the salon space. So it, they kind of converted um, through the process, but it, it took some time. Yeah. And I, I think too, like what you're saying, it's like making you, yes, you're the, the pro at one thing, but it's also getting you out of your comfort zone and realizing like, oh, I can also do this, which complements this aspect of what I already am. That's so, it's such a neat way to think about it too. And learning from other experts. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, us as humans and entrepreneurs, sometimes we fail to think that we need to know everything. And what happens is like, oh, if I know everything, then I can speak on behalf of that thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they always say that growth is on the edge of your, your comfort zone. And, and that, that should speak so loudly to so many people. It's like, if you actually want to expand and grow and make change, 
you probably don't know everything and you probably are saying things more like, I don't know, but I'm willing to learn, grow and expand. You're probably saying things like that. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at people that have got tremendous amount of success or people that have taken non-traditional sectors and moved into other areas, it's because they completely threw themselves into that abyss and was like, okay, like I'm going to use whatever I do know and apply it to things I don't know and then expand as many people as I possibly can. Peaches, word of mouth marketing for Squarespace stores. Make more sales with Peaches Squarespace plugins. Get the number one referral and affiliate software for your e-commerce store. Everyone wants to boost sales and reach new customers via affiliates or referrals and marketing programs. Word of mouth marketing is the best and most powerful, low cost and way to grow your business online organically. All you need to do is get the right software to help your customers talk about you and influ influencers promote you and reward them for doing so. I will put my referral link down below. And not being the smartest person in the room. I feel like that's another yeah. huge thing. I kind of miss that during the pandemic of going out and doing social events and chatting with other people in different industries even to learn. I mean, in any industry, you can learn something even if you're not in it. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you um, get into any investors or how did, did you do any rounds that way when it came to uh, creating kind of that that platform to stand on in order to move forward with the, the tech side? I did. Yes, we did both dilutive and non-dilutive funding. Um, so my co-founder is kind of the expert on the non-dilutive non side. So she went on and tackled and uh, I think she ended up managing getting us around 1.3 million of, of non-dilutive. So um, with the help of our Canadian government, uh, we've been able to secure that side. And then on the other side, we did uh, just shy of 3 million of investment on the other, on, on the dilutive side with some very well-known investors that are around the table with us, helping us get to the next stages. Wow, that's amazing. And how did you kind of start that process? Like, did you have people that you already kind of knew in that, in that world? Or did you have to actually go pitch it to like angel investors to, to get things going? That's exactly right. I, I essentially got myself into an accelerator and incubator that got me to teach me about, you know, pitch decks and presenting and um, understanding really venture capital from angel investment to like the different rounds and to understand really, you know, how to sell your product um, at, at a pre-revenue state or, you know, a very early stage. Uh, and so I was part of this accelerator and um, and that's where I learned those first, you know, kind of steps. And I got to in get introduced to others along the way. Uh, and then even as of recent, so every year, my job as a CEO of Salon Scale is I spend about 20% of my time with new new relationship building in, in the uh, investment sector. So oh, wow. it is a lot of, you know, constantly pitching. About 20% of my time is spent in different cities, different states, like constantly talking to people to talk, talk to them about what we're up to at Salon Scale. That's amazing. And like in, in your brands international as well. So what's the farthest place you've gone in the sense of like actually physically going to a country for salon scale? So it, I'm still very much only in North America right now. So yeah. we do have, we have a sign up in about, I think 53 countries. We have a sign up in 53 countries, which is crazy. Oh. Um, and we're starting to get a lot of word of mouth. So we only actually target and focus on the North American market. 80% of our customers are from the US, the rest the majority are from Canada. And then we have that 4% that are international. So on the international status of getting out into other countries, I can see us getting there um, as early as 2024, I believe we'll probably start to be going past and going maybe, you know, over some oceans and he heading into different countries that way. Wow. And I mean, it's so talk a little bit more. So I've obviously looked into this because I think it's a, such a brilliant business plan. <laughs> Um, so chat a little bit more about like the actual physical, like Bluetooth scale to how it kind of pairs to your app as well, just so people can have kind of a, understand a little bit more of the business that we're chatting about. Yeah. So when we first started, we just bought like, I think five or six different Bluetooth scales off Amazon. Uh, and we seemed to realize that all of them had a different Bluetooth standard or different chip. Now, okay. when you think of other technologies like a, a scale like that you stand on like you weigh yourself they all have a little bit more standardized bluetooth in those or let's say a bluetooth speaker there's more standardization in those those 
tech, those types of electronics. Whereas the Bluetooth scales that we have, they're, they're made for kitchens, they're kitchen scales. So mm -hmm. they're not like hairdressing color scales. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like the first dilemma was trying to figure out, do we try to code to all the Bluetooth scales and like let our users pick any type of kitchen scale or do we pick one and go for it? And so that's what we ended up doing was we picked one and we were we gave it away free with subscriptions um and that was really the first stage and then the second slice was you know hardware is really hard and to scale a business with hardware and like have to like have our users focused on having to use this bluetooth scale every time we expanded out other options so our our app it, our software itself almost also works like my fitness pal or like a food tracker so oh, you can use it manually you don't need the bluetooth scale so we have people that use their own devices, their own scales, and they manually punch things in. And we also have the third option, which is voice. So we also have people that will just voice their formula and it tells them the cost as well. So wow. giving all those functions allows us to really meet our users where they're at, um, gets people to try our product very quickly without investing too much. Um, and it just really kind of lets us give them more options instead of just being tethered to one, one scale. Now, is it, so it's a subscription per month for salon owners or stylists. Um, and is there different categories within the subscription as well? Or is there just one specific subscription? The only really different differentiator between it is there's an access for one person on one account and the other one has unlimited. Oh. So there's a different price point for a team versus a, a solo printer. Okay. That's so neat. I'm like, my mind is just like blown away by this. It's such a brilliant plan. And also what we were chatting about before having hopefully in the near future for my people like myself who own a spa, like for aesthetics, I feel like there's so many, like what you're saying about like palettes or different ways of having, having to measure even facials, like having those breakdowns is so interesting because even like we're basically we do everything but massage and hair so is how I break down our spa menu basically so we do so many different things but then trying to break down each category and measuring and then some of them aren't really measurable how to measure them or each person's different on how much product you're going to use so it's so I just think it's such a brilliant plan like so so smart of what you've done for the industry and I'm sure a lot of revenue has been like like entrepreneurs have saved so much money they're creating more revenue for themselves that independence of growing and scaling their business offering more money to employees and staff as well as their team um do you have any success stories that you can kind of think of off the top of your head of uh some of your customers absolutely um there's there's a few of them i think just <laughs> summing it up yeah, we, we have just shy of 3000 locations that use our product. But wow. what's more important is in the last year, we put $20 million of revenue back into those businesses. Uh, and so that right there just kind of shows the power of really understanding your, your, your parts or your product yeah. usage yeah. and then putting it back in. And so like how, like that's the success right there is that how do we keep making technologies that put money back in instead of taking out. Um, yes. So that's like the joy of this this product line and the power of it. When we break it down, the, some of the success stories we've had are people saying that they've you know, now got to spend more time with their family because their yeah. business was actually making profit. So they could step away a little bit more. Um, they had the confidence there. We've had people that have expanded locations, started to do multiple locations. We've had people that have, uh, one of them actually did $150,000 of increased revenue in their business in, in, in 2022, um, which is insane. Can you imagine, like, <laughs> where was that before? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> It just magically appeared. <laughs> oh, it's insane. And even down to the, the solopreneur, you know, they're seeing save anywhere from 800 to really $1,500 a month back in their pocket. Their rent is getting paid for, you know, yeah. now they're able to really just focus on providing excellence, excellence in customer service, customer care, um, focusing on their craft and know that, you know, nothing is leaving their back bar not paid for. Yeah. Now, did you um, notice much of a difference with the pandemic of sales or people like, did you find more people maybe were purchasing more because they're wanting to figure out their pricing? They had more time to, to kind of break down their business. 
and step away from kind of the chair and actually I know I personally was like looking way more at numbers and how to like better my business during lockdown but were did you guys notice any difference in your business side of things yeah so we when the pandemic hit we made a decision so that that decision I said we're going to shut off all payments like we're not taking any money from salons um during this time so we actually ended up laying off 75 percent of our staff to save our salon business um and it was a rough time but what happened was we grew about 101 percent in three months because we focused on saying we don't want to take your money um we're gonna like preserve the ship so that when we come back you know there'll be profit for you and there'll be a business for all of us to sell into and and to work with each other especially like our mission is to make profitable salons so there was no way I was taking out money in a time that they couldn't service anybody Mm -hmm. um and that one decision came like opened the floodgates because all these salon owners were at home and they're like uh now that I'm at home I want to set my pricing up I want to set my business up so like but like how do I pay for this and and we came up with this you know bundle option which was like okay well why don't you just pay for the year for half price wow. and we did that and that's where we grew that 101 percent in those those few short months enough to be able to bring back our team and now we've seen you know growth from there and even as of recent when I look at our last quarter you know we've added almost 700 locations in the last quarter alone um which is up 89 percent from the previous year so we're seeing you know doubles of growth here at salon scale and it's it is increasing i think specifically with inflation specifically Mm -hmm. post-pandemic specifically that people are now starting to get to a new normal and the inflection is just at the right point to look at cost management yeah and i feel like your timing in the industry is ideal like the it it worked out in the sense of timing and I and I think everything happens for a reason so <laughs> I believe in that so do you now how many um employees or staff do you have on board with salon scale currently we have 22 uh employees at salon scale currently and growing um we just recently closed around back in December so we will be expanding um, this year and focusing again mostly on you know adding more salon scalers to our to our community and that will be our initiative for the for the year that's amazing uh do you have any big um goals for 2024 what 2024 2023 what year are we in 2023 don't worry I've found that too I'm like <laughs> as a visionary I'm like why can't we do this tomorrow they're like exactly. that is going to take us three years to make yeah. um <laughs> Uh, but I think the big uh, one for us is to really optimize that back bar. So I, I like to say the word OS or operating system. So how do we become a calculator to a full on operating system for the back? So adding things on billing and invoicing allows, you know, what we've seen is the birth of the hybrid um, salon is really high. So we have a lot of co people that have like some people rent, some people um, have, you know, commission based, like there's, and it's almost like they need like a, a convenient convenience store in their back end so they need you know a software to be able to you know charge their renters but then also like charge their customer they need some type of software there so we are um adding this type of element to us which allows you to um you know push pull whatever you want from that back bar making sure that billing and invoicing is proper um and you know our our hopes is to automate the back bar to automate your ordering to never have to you know rip tabs or keep notes but to simply automate it for you so um we're going to probably it's going to take us a few years to kind of get there but our our focus is all the way to the supply to streamline the supply and make sure again that we're ordering efficiently and not out of emotion and imp- impulsivity yeah, um, using technology yeah <laughs> one of those definitely I'm like oh it's on sale we definitely need to order like 10 of them makes sense right but oh, how- it's easy to it's e- you know what honestly but the emotional side of our business is what makes great businesses so right. I don't want to dim anyone's light as an entrepreneur that focus like you're intuitive if you're an intuitive owner that's great well you can't you can't train someone to be intuitive sure. but numbers don't lie yeah. and so when there's a sector when you when you lean your intuitiveness and your emotional side into the data sets or into you know finance and all that stuff it could light your business on fire so that's why you know having data driven decisions or having data there it cuts through emotion it's a Great. fact or fiction it doesn't let you have those so that's why i think you know 
leaning into that stuff and, and, and accepting yourself who you are as a leader. Um, both those two, you know, become beautiful trends to, you know, increase, you know, who you are and, and the profits in your business. Sometimes you just can't explain your decisions. I know I'm sometimes like that. I'm like, just trust me, guys, we've got this, like, we'll figure it out <laughs> moving forward. And then, yeah, having oh. that backup of the numbers to like realistically be like, okay, this is ideal. This is, this actually makes sense looking back. And I feel like since the pandemic, like, well, we're both in Canada. So I'm in Ontario. We were closed for a very long time in Ontario. And yeah. I found it really made me look at the numbers and figure out like even with my bookkeeper and accountant I don't think I've ever spoke to them so much in my life during the pandemic and figuring out oh we have to raise our numbers by this much each year to like for the cost and break down and I had that time to figure out the, for the most part the cost per product and then reordering and then the pricing just kept going up too and I feel like with salons as well like you're saying there's so many different ways that people are being paid as well as renting space, commissions, contract workers. There's so many different ways. And I feel like the public eye doesn't know that within salon and spa. There's so many different ways to make revenue. There's so many different ways to be paid, commissions, splits, hourly. Like there's so many different things. Um, and having kind of a hub, like you're saying, kind of like that convenience store of having it all under one roof would be, I, that's what the industry needs. No one's done it yet. Oh, for sure. Are you like me and every other entrepreneur on this planet trying to make things as simple and easy as possible, even when it comes to your health? Goalie apple cider vinegar gummies can help. Use promo code NickManion at checkout for 10% off your order. For those looking for a different take on apple cider vinegar, Goalie apple cider vinegar gummies contain all the old school benefits of traditional apple cider vinegar in an easy take gummy form. Their products are vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, and gelatin-free. Taste the apple, not so much the vinegar. Two gummies contain one apple cider vinegar shot. Now, don't forget to use promo code NickManion at checkout for 10% off. I think now knowing business more than I have ever, I think sometimes when you have a flat price for years and years and years, like let's say the price of Netflix is the same price all the time yeah. is because Netflix does, that's not their, that's not their money maker. Their big maker is really making the movies and it's the, the data that they're getting on what people are using, consuming to help provide that for the industry to make better, you know, films and better, yes. you know, it, it, there's so much more there. So you can have a flat based model on your pricing model if you're moving to something greater but when you are in the spa space or salon space and you charge the same price for a haircut for the 30 years of your business there is no expansion strategy that haircut didn't turn into something else internally and so you need to really think about you know why um and and every year there should be an inflation to your base rate always you know we see you know the economy always grows around that three percent so at least three percent of your sales your, your just baseline should be going up. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then you know, keeping an eye on those variable costs is, is really important in your business. Um, but I think compound effects are, are real and they are very scary, as a, especially in the beauty sector, because mm -hmm. your, your kindness is getting taken advantage of um, and the credit cards are, are not going to stop. And so when we put products on there and we don't price our, our services or our things properly and then we have that compounding because last year you didn't increase by three percent now you have three percent from last and whatever's on those the credit cards which are average at probably closer to like 16 percent so yeah. you're you know you're taking these big losses and it's going to everybody else so mm -hmm. taking the time to sit back is good and i feel like it affects the industry all around if you're also not raising your pricing like we're in a small town here and I've like, I've definitely figured out over the years, like my mom's actually a hairstylist. So I grew up in the right. beauty world. She always wanted me to get into hair, just not my thing. I literally do nothing with mine. So I was like, oh, aesthetics. That's kind of where I moved into going to aesthetic school. But I realized in a small town, a lot of people were my mom's age in the industry. My mom's, yeah, I don't think she's raised her prices for like 25 years. She works from home. She doesn't have as much overhead expenses, whatever. But then it also reflects when someone goes somewhere else who has a salon, who has staff, they're like, well, I can get it cheaper if I go to this person. So 
actually, if you don't raise your prices, you're actually damaging the industry, I find, in my opinion. Because oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's not reflected across the board. And then yes, that poor person who hasn't been raising their prices in 25, 30 years, then if they go to raise their prices, it's going to be like double basically from when they had started in day one. Well, and that's like, you know, one of our other one of my other favorite Canadians is Miss Dawn Bradley. She says it all the time, which is um she'll say a price increase doesn't always mean a pay increase. You know, it's, and it's, it's so true, right? Like it's, that's exactly right. What happens you waited too long that by the time you price increased, you're like thinking you're going to get more pay, but it actually just went to paying down what, what, you know, you missed out on the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think, you know, it, it is, it is time, but it, you know, technology needed to build us together. Social media allowed us to talk platforms and podcasts and things like this allow us to create the mass amount of awareness to say, you know, we're just like each other. And so I think our community has just gotten to an all time high where we're not necessarily competing. Um, it's, it's competition. It's, it's, it's not competition anymore. It's, it's community over competition. And I think that that has been a beautiful thing for us to see in the last couple of years, especially through the pandemic that we're now leaning on each other to ask each other instead of try to compete with each other. I totally agree with you. And I, I think it's like that younger realm of people coming into the industry and yeah, ha- having more of that mentorship, like from the ones who have been in it for 10 plus years, let's say the younger ones that are coming in, we're kind of not, I don't want to say holding their hand, but we're helping guiding them into what what we've learned over the years and not having that I don't know yeah like that whole competition thing I feel like it's like community over competition at the end of the day because it's just going to make the industry better for everyone oh yeah and like we're in the world of change now you know if you get bored of a show you can just swipe and it's it's so fast right and so what we find is the new generation, they, they're they not gonna stay in the same job, in the same seat, charging the same thing for the next 20, 30 years. Like they will never do that. That's just not part of the new human <laughs> humans that we're creating. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the businesses have to catch up to the the new behaviors that are, that are being created through this type of, you know, inspiration, let's say that comes very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that, you know, services are being done by, a, you know, a new professional to someone who's been in the industry for 30 years, completely different. Um, And so, you know, we just, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see this change. It's just, it's just kind of neat to kind of sit back and be like, wow, like, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a new, new time for sure. And even I look at now that like a lot of the spa shows and stuff are happening to all these new businesses, like I'm excited to go to the one in Toronto and just because I haven't obviously been since like pre-pandemic so it's gonna be so fun to go and see all these new companies that are launching and and just the growth like you're saying in the past few years even what has grown in the beauty industry is it's incredible um do you have any takeaways um as like advice from an entrepreneur that you would uh tell our listeners something that you kind of live by or something that advice you would give someone else yeah I would say that um, sometimes I think you feel like you have to sacrifice everything to get success and you're probably missing out on your family. You're missing out on your friends. Um, you're working like all hours of the night because like you're racing and you're trying to get there. Cause there's these imaginary people that are going to probably take your idea or your things away. Um, but what I want to say is that the actual more that you stop and you actually invest in yourself and you fill your cup up, you create almost like this enormous amount of abundance of energy. And that's all about love. And so if you actually focus on loving yourself as an entrepreneur and loving life and loving every single person that is in it that has contributed to you being full, it almost it almost will overfill and it'll fill everybody around your around you um so taking more time for yourself taking time off um trying to have more patience because the more you push yourself your empathy drops right you start to get more stressed you're gonna feel like a little burnt out um and then it goes away from really what you want so stop more relax more have more self-care and love yourself more and and watch what happens after that I think that's such a good point, especially in the beauty world. We're taking care of everyone else. We're making sure everyone else looks great when we're like, oh God, I just need to brush my hair this morning and make myself look somewhat presentable, right? I think that's such a great 
great takeaway in the sense of the industry we're in as well as as females for the most part I mean it is mostly female dominant industry but like we're always taking care of everyone else I feel like that you know what there's a documentary coming out there's a study called the tallest poppy I don't know if you've seen this but it's a study on women entrepreneurs specifically so what happens is when we see women the tallest poppy like really beautiful like she's put together she goes to the spa all the time she has her hair done she has her nails done she goes to the gym she looks great maybe she's gotten some procedures we then start trying to clip that person Mm. and so don't let your insecurity or don't let your threat take down the other person's success and so so the thing about us as women we need to embrace that that is what success is success is giving yourself more that's not someone that's selfish and just has it all together that's someone that has risen to a point that they deserve to stand tall and we should just embrace it instead of trying to nip it you know or I love judge that. it yeah, yeah I feel like that's such and such a good visual too so where's this documentary I gotta watch it now so it's a study that's being done actually by the women. Oh, it's like, I think the Women's Entrepreneurship Society, I think it is. Okay. I will send it to you and then you can share with your community. Yeah. Um, but basically they're doing this whole study on it. And it's just talking about how this is kind of what happens is that um, because women traditionally, it's if you don't see it, you don't achieve it. Right. And it's like pretty hard for us because it's been a while since we've had these bigger positions been in more positions of power but this generation there's a lot of women in power we have a lot more ceo women out there we have a lot more people in sectors that don't normally have women that are in there um and so we're kind of transitioning um and so it's kind of studying that kind of mindset and changing that and and the whole study is phenomenal i'll definitely send that to you yeah that's also why i love the the podcast like we started this during lockdown because I was also bored and wanted to talk to people so I feel like that was a huge part of why we started it but to be able to jump on calls like yourself of people who I found online and I was like I want to hear about their story and I feel like this is what we've done with the podcast is hearing the real behind the scenes of what what entrepreneurs are going through and I mean, we've kind of niched it down a little bit more into the beauty realm because that's what a lot of our following is. Um, but that's such a beautiful piece to end this and and thinking of the poppy, right? And thinking of of not bringing people down just because they seem to have it all together and actually knowing the real person and getting to know them, not just having kind of a stigma either, just looking at someone expecting they, they're, you know, that perfect, they've got no issues or just that that perfect person standing in front of us. And really getting to know people on on those other levels is important. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks so much, Alicia. I feel like this has been like a great, so many takeaways. I'm ready to look at the numbers in my business and excited to see where salon scale goes in the next, even this year. It sounds like you've got lots of plans for, for this year. So thanks so much for jumping on with us today. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, thank you.